Welcome back everybody to the third and final part of the conversion of alcohols to alkenes and in this part I'll be discussing and going over some examples. To be specific I'll be going over three examples. So let's get started right away. In the first example we have this primary alcohol and we're reacting it with H2SO4. The best thing for you guys to do now is to pause the video and go over the problem and try to come up with a product and compare your product, your answer basically, to my answer. So if you guys were paying attention to the first video, the first part of this um, topic, I said that if you have a primary alcohol, right, this is our primary alcohol, and you react it with H2SO4, the reaction will not occur. That is, excuse me, that is exactly what happens. This reaction does not occur merely due to the fact that we have a primary alcohol and this does not react with H2SO4. Again, what reacts with H2SO4 is secondary and tertiary alcohols. Okay? So there you have it. That's our first example. Um, kind of tricky one, but if you guys were paying attention to the subtle details, you should have got this one. The second example. is basically this okay so if you have this secondary alcohol and you're reacting with H2SO4 what is the product of this reaction the product of this reaction is this alkene okay let me move this up a little bit it's this alkene right here okay and let's go over the reaction mechanism of how I came up with uh, this alkene so, again, this reaction will occur because this is a secondary alcohol, so secondary and tertiary alcohols can react with H2SO4. So, the reaction will proceed, and the reaction mechanism, pretty straightforward. First step is um, H2SO4 reacting with the alcohol, the oxygen on the alcohol uh, plucks in a hydrogen off of H2SO4, pair of electrons go into the oxygen. You generate from this step um, HSO4 minus, right, which is right here, and you generate um, this intermediate with this really good leaving group right here. And this leaving group is soon to be water, okay? So let me zoom out just a little bit. Now the next step is basically um, you kick off the leaving group and you form your secondary carbocation intermediate. So again, you kick off the leaving group, you form your secondary carbocation intermediate. Now what you do is a hydride shift. You move the hydride, excuse me, you move the hydrogen to this position where now you could form a carbocation that is tertiary, okay, that is substituted by three different things and that is exactly what we did and this is the tertiary carbocation intermediate as you guys see that this carbon now that is tertiary bears the positive charge now this is where the elimination step comes into play HSO4- minus picks up this hydrogen right here you do the little elimination step where this pair of electron this bond right here forms the double bond and that's all it is to it you form your alkene product and there it is so again let's go over this one more time just a little recap if you have secondary alcohol like this reacting with H2SO4 you generate this alkene product first step the oxygen off the alcohol plucks the H generate HSO4 minus pair of electrons go on O and that's what you have here, HSO4 minus, and you have this intermediate with leaving group. Leaving group gets kicked off, you form H2O, you form the secondary carbocation. You do a hydride shift. So let me write that down actually, that's really important. So high dried hydride shift, okay? You do this little hydride, sh hydride shift, 
um, now you form a tertiary carbocation, right? Now the elimination step, HSO4 minus picks up that H. You do a little elimination step right here to form the alkene product. And whenever you guys are doing this reaction, you have to keep in mind uh, you want to make the most substituted alkene product, and that refers back to Zaitsev's rule. Okay, where well, you want to form the most substituted alkene product from the elimination step. Okay, so again, let's go over this briefly. You can form an alkene at three different positions. You can form it here, between this carbon and this carbon, here, between this carbon and this carbon, or like the one we have formed. That's the third way you could form it. Again, if you form it here, between this carbon and this carbon, it's a disubstituted alkene. If you form the um, the double bond here, again, it's a disubstituted alkene, right? There's one substituent here, one substituent here, okay? Now, if you form the alkene the way I did, it's tri-substituted, right? You have one substituent here, one substituent here, another substituent here. So there you have it. It's a tri-substituted alkene product. And you guys have to keep that in mind. You guys have to obey and follow Zaitsev's rule which states that you want to form the most substituted alkene product because that is what generates the more stable alkene product. So there you have it. That is your second example right here. And now the third and final example you guys have been waiting for is this one right okay let me cover that up right there here okay if you have this primary alcohol right and you're reacting with POCl3 and pyridine okay what is the product from this reaction the product of this reaction is this alkene okay so let's go over the reaction mechanism excuse me first step okay oxygen from the alcohol makes a bond between uh, the oxygen and the phosphorus the chlorine pops off okay so that is what you form right there okay it looks kinda messy it looks kinda intimidating don't get scared okay so follow the generic example I showed you guys in the in the second part, I believe. So, um, again, um, nothing to be afraid of. It looks kind of crazy, but it's not that it's not that complicated. Again, this is our little alcohol piece, and all you have formed now, all you have added to this system is the POCl2. So the POCl2 is ne is bonded to the oxygen, and now the oxygen, since it has three bonds now. It has a positive charge, right? So this is the, the third, I mean, excuse me, this is the second and final step in the reaction mechanism. What happens now is that the leaving group is about to get kicked off, okay? As you're kicking off the leaving group, you're generating your double bond, okay? You're generating your double bond. And your, um, and pyridine, is picking up this H okay so the H you eliminate to form the double bond is the one that's adjacent to the carbon that has the leaving group okay so this is the carbon that has the leaving group and the carbon adjacent to it is this one okay and so the H on this carbon is the one that you um, choose to do the elimination step not the H on this carbon okay so you have to keep that in mind a lot of people make that mistake okay so so you don't choose any H from here 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 or the H from here it's specifically from the carbon okay so this is the carbon that's adjacent to the carbon bearing the leaving group okay so pyridine picks up the H you form the double bond kick off the leaving group the product you yield is your alkene and also some other uh, not so significant products you form is basically this which was the leaving group the pyridine with the H and now the nitrogen has a positive charge and also chlorine with a negative okay 
So there you have it. That's our chlor uh, that's our alkene product. So let's go over a brief little recap of this whole thing. Again, primary alcohol, PLCO3 and pyridine gives you this alkene product. Um, oxygen forms a bond with this phosphorus, with the phosphorus of the POCl3 group. The chlorine gets picked up, uh, kick, kicked off, and there it is, being as a byproduct of this first step. You form this intermediate, okay? You form this intermediate right here with the leaving group, okay? So you kick off the leaving group, form the double bond, pyridine picks up the H, and all you form is your alkane product and some not so significant, again, um, other things that you form as byproducts. So there you guys have it. Um, these are the three examples <sighs> covering the, the information you guys need to know about the reactions of alcohols to alkenes. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something, and um, uh, stay tuned because for the next few ep uh, next few videos, I'll be discussing another topic, which is ethers. So thank you guys for listening, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.